All right, thank you, Matt. Our next speaker has directly been affected by this issue. Before coming to work at CLC, she was the primary caretaker of her mother, who was suffering from sinus cancer and received very little funding from OHIP to cover, help cover basic health care costs. Fortunately, her mother beat cancer. However, her family is still feeling the financial strain this lack of OHIP coverage has produced. Please give a warm welcome to Sharon Milan. You've heard a lot so far about the funding of abortion and the financial drain it has on our health care system. But I am here today to stand for the women of Ontario who are being abused by our provincial government by providing them with a service that physically, mentally, and psychologically harms them. I am here to stand for women whose lives will never be the same, who live day in and day out with the trauma that came from getting this free procedure. Abortion hurts women. They suffer emotionally, psychologically, and physically. So why is our government ignoring the cries of women across the province? Dr. Julius Fogel, a psychiatrist and obstetrician who has committed more than 20,000 abortions himself, said, I quote, Every woman, whatever her age, background, or sexuality, has a trauma at destroying a pregnancy. A level of humanness is touched. This is a part of her own life. She destroys a pregnancy. She is destroying herself. There is no way it can be innocuous. End quote. Post-abortion trauma is a serious health concern to women across Ontario and adds to the financial strain that our health care system, on our health care system. Studies have shown that a minimum of 20% of women who abort will experience post-traumatic stress disorder. This should not be surprising, given that when you ask a woman, that when you ask women who've had abortions why they choose to abort, their number one response is, I thought I had no choice. On top of that, studies show that women who've had abortions experience a 155% greater risk of attempted suicide. Women are killing themselves after undergoing a procedure that we are forced to pay for. Women and children are dying from a procedure that we are forced to pay for. The government is forcing blood on our hands by making us pay for these acts of homicide. Our very own College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario found that women who've had abortions are five times more likely to be hospitalized for psychiatric problems. The doctors in our very own backyards acknowledge the serious and detrimental, detrimental risks inflicted on women, and yet our government is ignoring these facts. They're ignoring these doctors, and they're ignoring the people of Ontario they are here to represent. Here, here. What do these women have to say? Nobody said it would hurt so much. I still grieve, and it's been over 10 years. I became suicidal and depressed. It was one of the most painful experiences of my life. These are just some of the hundreds of thousands of testimonies of post-abortive women who are now speaking out. If 30 to 50 million dollars is being spent on the cost of abortion, how much more money is being used to cover the side effects that abortion has on women? Based on the 2013 report by the Mental Health Commission of Canada, we have estimated the cost to be over half a billion dollars annually. one of us free. 
free from indirectly contributing to the pain and suffering inflicted on women and children through abortions. Yeah. By defunding abortion, it would send a clear message that this is not a legitimate health care procedure and therefore fewer women would make that harmful choice. Hey! 